In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the basics that you need to start building IoT applications using Node-RED. I'm Kudzai Maditreza with Industry40.tv and I regularly publish Industrial Internet of Things videos on this channel. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to make sure that you never miss any of the videos. Okay, here I've got an IIoT Industrial Programmable Controller, the Groove Epic. So this device comes pre-installed with Node-RED and we'll be accessing it using a web browser on my PC by connecting it on the same network as my PC. So using Node-RED on this controller would allow us to directly access temperature sensor data, push buttons and LEDs via the I.O. modules on the rack here. Okay, and then here I've got this legacy device, industrial controller from Opto22 as well. Now this one doesn't run Node-RED directly on its hardware. Instead, we're going to use Node-RED installed on my PC to talk Modbus with this device, which is a situation that you might find relatable because currently many controllers in industry, they do not natively run Node-RED, but they can be accessed using Node-RED running on a PC. And then here I've got uh, a Raspberry Pi. This really is a way for you to start experimenting with collecting data from your plant equipment without investing a lot of money. And it's also something that you can play around with to discover more possibilities with Node-RED. So we'll be activating Node-RED on the Raspberry Pi and using it in the demo. So Node-RED is basically JavaScript libraries that run on a server-side JavaScript engine called Node.js and Node.js itself is a very popular JavaScript framework. So in order to install Node-RED, you must first install Node.js framework and to do that, you go to www.nodejs.org and then we're going to download the latest stable version. And then when the setup file is finished downloading, we're going to run it. Install. Okay, Node.js has been successfully installed. Okay, now that Node.js has been successfully installed, we can go ahead and install Node-RED. So to do that, I'm going to pull up my command prompt. Then I'm going to type npm install hyphen g node red okay so node red has been successfully installed on my pc so i'm on my windows pc where i've just installed node red now to begin building IoT solutions using Node-RED, I must start the Node-RED service first. And to do that, I must go to my command prompt. And then I will type in Node-RED. Okay, so here you can see that my Node-RED server is now running. So if I want to access my editor, I must go to my browser and type in the IP address of the device on which the Node-RED service is running. And since this is running on my PC, I'll type in the local host and then I'll use the port number which is 1880. Okay, and then uh, from there, you'll get to the Node-RED editor. So you'll notice that the editor is divided into three sections. This section here to the left is where you will find your Node-RED packages, otherwise known as nodes. They are represented using 
blocks of different colors and they are organized into categories such as input, output, function, social, storage, etc. depending on the type of the node. And then at the center of the editor here is the canvas. This is where you can drag your nodes and connect them to create a flow as you will see later in this course. So if you've got an application that is big and with different functionalities, you can actually create more than one page and all your pages will appear as tabs at the top here. So as you can see here, we're currently on floor one, but we can create a new page by clicking the plus sign here. And then we're now on floor number two, and then you can alternate between the different tabs at the top here. And then the section to your right here contains these two elements info and debug so each node comes with a brief description of how it works in terms of the input format that it takes and the output format that it produces so in order to find out information about a node what you do is you drag a node onto the canvas you highlight it by clicking it once and then opening the info tab to reveal the information about the node and then the debug window is basically what you'd use to test what result you're getting from a flow. So you could use it to trace an error or just to view your results in real time as the flow is running. Now, once you've built your flow here, you can start running it by clicking on this deploy button here. So some nodes are automatically added with the installation of node red. These are called the core nodes and they range from input, output, storage, and MQTT communication nodes, among many others. Let's take a look at a few of these nodes. Okay, the first core node that we're going to look at is this inject node, which I've already dragged onto the canvas. So you can use this node if you want to inject a timestamp into your node red connection. And you can set whether the injection happens manually by clicking here, or you can configure it to inject at a specified interval of time. You'll see later how we use this node. And then the next core node that we're going to look at is the MQTT node. So the MQTT node is used to subscribe to an MQTT broker and listen on a topic. And then it will return data published on that topic or its output. So you can connect another node to this output if you want to consume the returned data. And then we've got the debug node. So the debug node allows you to connect to an output of any node in order to display the output of that node on the debug window. And the last one that we're going to look at is the function node. So the function node allows you to include custom JavaScript code if what you want to achieve cannot be done using a pre-built node. So these are just a few of the many node red core nodes. So first, I'll make sure that my node red service is running. By going to the command prompt and typing node red. Okay, so once my node red service is running, I'll go ahead and access the editor by going to localhost. port 1880 since node red is running locally on my machine okay so now my node red editor is open so what i want to do here is to create a simple node red solution otherwise known as a flow that will display hello world in the debug window and then we're going to alter the behavior of that flow to demonstrate more concepts okay so to do that we must begin by going to our node palette here to the left and then here I'll drag my inject node, which I'll use to inject a string and place it on the canvas. Okay, now I need a node that I will use to display the injected string on the debug window. And for that, I'll drag the debug node and place it on the canvas. And then I'll connect the output of my inject node to the input of my debug node. Okay, so now I need to configure the inject node 
and put the actual string to be sent for display. So to do that, I'll double click the node to go into its properties. And for now, I'll change the payload to be a string since I'll be passing on a string to the node connected to the output. Okay, now that I've selected the string as payload, I need to put in the actual string. So I'll type in hello world here. And then I can give my node a name. This is just for display purposes. And then click done. And then from there, I'll double click the debug node. Here, I'll leave the output as payload so that we can display the payload coming from the inject node. And then I'll choose where I want to display the string, which is going to be the default, which is the debug window. So I'm going to give this node a name. And then click done. Okay, so we've created our flow. So to run it, we must deploy it by clicking the deploy button on the top right corner. Okay, and then now I'll go and open the debug window. So as you can see, nothing is showing yet on the debug window because we are supposed to click the input of the inject node to send the string. So we're going to do that. So as you can see, as soon as I click the input of the inject string, our hello world is displayed on the debug window. And I'll do that again. Now, what we want to do is to automate the process of sending the string instead of clicking each time. So to do that, I'll open the inject node properties again. So this time I'll go to repeat and from the drop down menu, I'll select interval. And then I'll put three seconds. So now my node is going to inject a string every three seconds repeatedly. Click done and then clear the debug window and then we can deploy. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting a hello, hello world on the debug window after every three seconds. So now what I want to do is to add pre-processing to my flow. So what I mean is instead of displaying the hello world as it is, I want to put a node in between the inject and the debug that would alter the string and then pass it on to the debug node after that. So to do that, I'll go to my node palette here and drag the function block onto the canvas. So this function block allows me to put custom JavaScript code to manipulate the string before displaying it. So I'll delete this. And connect my function block in between the two nodes and then I'll double click the function node so as you can see I've got a text editor here so I'll add my code I'll take whatever payload is coming from the inject node and then I'll append the string And then this statement here returns or passes the message to the debug node. So I'll give my function block a name. Click done. So I'll clear the debug window first. And then click deploy. So as you can see, we're now getting a string that has got this is good I appended to the end of it. So this is a very basic node red flow. However, node red flows can get very big and complex as you start to read information from external physical and digital resources, as you will see in the videos that follow. So there are two ways of installing nodes onto your node red platform. The first is through the node red editor and the second is through the command line. Let's begin by taking a look at the first method 
of using the node rate editor so first i'll make sure that my node rate service is running by going to the command prompt and typing node red okay so once my node red service is running i'll go ahead and access the editor by going to localhost port 1880 since node red is running locally on my machine so to install a node red package i'll go to my menu select manage palette so this will take you to a palette where there is two tabs one tab is for the nodes that are currently installed on your node red platform and the other one is the tab for searching for packages to install so let's open the install tab so here I will search for example IBM Watson IoT and then I will click install install okay so the installation is complete and then you can see a list of nodes that have been added to your palette so you can close this and go to your palette you should be able to see the Watson IoT nodes so we have got one watson iot node under the inputs and then we've also got another watson iot under output and then if it so happens that you can't get your nodes to install using the editor as i have experienced in the past you can use the command prompt so i'll pull up the command prompt and then once your command prompt is up you can type npm install Node red, node Watson. So obviously we have that installed already, so I'm not going to go ahead with the installation. So basically that is how you install node red packages. So for demonstration, I'm going to be using this industrial controller that talks Modbus TCP. And then here I've got a potentiometer that is connected to this analog input module. And I've scaled this potentiometer to give us a value ranging from 0 to 100%. And then the value of the potentiometer is mapped to a Modbus register address, which I'm going to read to collect the potentiometer value using Node Red. So, first, I'll make sure that my Node Red service is running by going to the command prompt and typing Node Red. Okay, so once my node red service is running, I'll go ahead and access the editor by going to localhost port 1880 since node red is running locally on my machine. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to install a node red package that would enable me to read mod based data. And to do that, I'll go to my menu here and then select manage palette and then i'll go to install and type node red contrib modbus so as you can see i already have it installed on my node red platform here so you can go ahead and click install to install this package so if you don't know beforehand the name of the package that you want to install, you can go to the Node Red website and search for it. There you will find all the information, including the number of nodes that are going to be installed within that package and also the installation command. Okay, now let's begin building our flow to read the Modbus data. So the first thing that I'm going to need is the inject node to inject the time interval for reading the Modbus data. So I'll drag it onto the canvas, double click on it, and then set the time interval to 3 seconds. And then I'll give it a name, which is just for display purposes. And then click done. Now the next thing that I want to do is to build a request message that I will send to my Modbus TCP device to read the potentiometer value. 
So for that, I'm not going to use any special package. Rather, I'll use the function node to create the message. So I'll look for my function node and then drag it onto the canvas. Double click on it. And then I'll use this text editor here to build my message. So my message payload is going to be my function code for reading holding registers, which is equals to three. My modbus device unit ID. which is equals to 110 my modbus register address which is 4096 and then the number of points to read which is 2 and then I'll give my node a name and then click done and then I'll connect these two so now the next thing that I need is a node that will send this Modbus message to my controller and wait for the response. So for that, I'll use the Modbus flex getter node that comes with the Modbus package that we installed earlier. So I'll drag it onto the canvas and then I'll double click to go into its properties. So here is the name of my controller. And then here select TCP and then this is the IP address of my controller and the mod passport number. So that's all you need to change here. So I'll click update and then I'll change the display name of my node and then click done. And then again, I'll connect these two. Okay, so this node that we've just added is going to send a mod TCP request and get a response. But the response is two 16-bit integers, of course, depending on the Modbus implementation of your device. So we want to convert that to a float number that we can easily display. So to do that, I'll use another function block to do the conversion. So I'll drag this function block onto the canvas. And then I'll go into its text editor and paste this code that does the conversion which is a few lines of JavaScript statements that retain a float value. And then I'll change the display name. Then click done. And then I'll connect these two. Okay, and then finally we're going to use a debug node to display this value on the debug window. Okay, so we've created the flow for reading Modbus data. So now let's deploy our application. And then we go to the debug window. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting our potentiometer value after every three seconds. So if I turn up the potentiometer, we start getting a higher value. And if I turn it down, we start getting a lower value. So first, I'll make sure that my node red service is running. By going to the command prompt and typing node red. Okay, so once my node red service is running, I'll go ahead and access the editor by going to localhost. Port 1880. Since node red is running locally on my machine. So here I've got a node red flow that reads the value of this potentiometer from this industrial controller via Modbus TCP protocol. So what we want to do is to add an HMI page that will allow us to view and control plant equipment via a web browser. So to begin, we must install a node red package that will allow us to create graphical controls for building dashboards on node red. And to do that, I'll go to my menu. Manage palette, go to install, and then type in the name of the package, which is not red hyphen dashboard. Once 
Okay, so when your Node Red dashboard package is finished installing, you can go to the Node palette to the left here and scroll down to see what controls have been added. So as you can see under dashboard here, we have a variety of graphical controls that we can drag and drop onto our canvas and start building the dashboard. So this includes a drop down menu, button, slider, text input, a chart, radial gauge, and we can also use a web form. And then here to the top right corner, you'll find that a new tab has been added with a bar chart icon. So this is the tab that lets you access and create your dashboard layout. You can also access your dashboard layout by going to menu, view, and then selecting dashboard here. So here the layout is organized such that you can create tabs in your dashboard and inside each tab you can group your controls. Let me show you how that works in practice. So I want to display the value of the potentiometer that I'm reading via Modbus as a line chart. So I'll drag a chart control onto the canvas. And then now to configure my chart control and also to start laying out my dashboard, I'll double click on the chart node. And then I'll begin by assigning it to a group. So I'll put it under a group called trends. And then I'll add a new tab which is going to be my main page. And then from there, I'll put uh, the configuration information, starting with the name of the chart and the X axis. I want it to be in the range of minutes. And my potentiometer value is ranging from zero to 100. And then press done. So as you can see already to the right here, a hierarchy has been formed. My potentiometer chart is in a group called trends, which is inside the main page. So I'll send the potentiometer value coming in via Modbus TCP to the chart by connecting the two. And then I'll deploy. And then we can view the live page by clicking this button here. So there is our chart. And if I turn up the potentiometer, you see our trend is rising. And then if I turn it down, so this is a real time view of the value that we are reading from the potentiometer. Okay. And then I can also add a radial gauge to display the same value. I'll double click it. And this I'll put under the gauges on the same page. And then the range will be from zero to 100. And then the unit is percent. And then here I can also use the colors as a warning. If it gets to 50% and when it gets to 75% and then I'll click done and connect it to the same value deploy and then when we go to the page without even refreshing it's already displaying so if I turn up the post again And then I'll turn it down. Okay, so now what I want to be able to do is to send the information down to the controller from the browser. So I've got this buzzer here connected to the digital output module on the controller rack. So what I want to do is I want to put a toggle switch here that will sound the buzzer on and off when it is toggled. So I'll drag the switch control onto the canvas. 
double click to change its properties and then this one i'll put it under the switches group on the main page and then i'll call this switch the buzzer okay this time we're not going to use modbus to send the information down to the controller instead we're going to use a node red package that was specifically built for this controller so i'm going to write to the controller so here i'll add the controller ip address and then i'll put my rest api keys So I'm writing to a digital output point and the name of the tag is do underscore buzzer and I click done and then I connect the two and then I deploy and then when we go to our live view we see there our switch is already appearing and then if I toggle this switch my buzzer goes on and then if I switch it off, it goes off, on and off. So here I've got a node red flow that is reading Modbus data from an industrial controller and displaying it on the web browser. Now what I want to do is to send the Modbus data to Azure IoT Suite to make it available to analytics software. So the first thing that I need to do is to log into my Azure portal. So I already have an Azure IoT Hub created. So basically an Azure IoT Hub is a cloud gateway to the Azure IoT Suite. And I've got a device registered under Azure IoT Hub. So I'll go into my IoT Hub and copy the device connection string that would allow us to send data to Azure IoT. So I'll go into my IoT Hub and then I'll go to IoT Edge. And here you see I've got a device listed with a device ID of device 001. So I'll click into the device. And then here I'll copy the primary key, the device ID, and then extract the host name from the connection string. Okay, so I've copied that. Now let's go back to the node red flow. So here I'll first use a function block to prepare my Azure IoT message. And then I'll double click into the text editor. And then here I'll paste this message, which is a JSON object. It specifies the device ID, the primary key, and then the protocol that I'm going to be using, which is MQTT. And then the data, which is the message payload coming from the Modbus device. And then I'll label this. And then from here, I'll drag the Azure IoT Hub node, which is the one responsible for communicating with the cloud. And then I'll go into its properties. I'll specify the transmission protocol. And then I'll paste the host name of my device. And then I'll connect to the potentiometer value coming from this function block. And then I'll deploy my application. Okay, so as you can see, we've successfully sent the message to the Azure IoT Hub. So let's go back to my Azure portal and see if any messages are being received. So here I'll go back to my IoT Hub page. And then I'll go into overview. We view the data for the from the past hour. And then here you can see our device to cloud messages trend is showing us a spike, which means we're actually receiving messages from the device. Okay, so here I've got this programmable automation controller 
that is natively running node red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the temperature value of this probe here connected to this temperature module here. And then if the temperature goes above a certain threshold, I'll publish an on signal to a public broker. And then if the temperature value is above a certain threshold, I'll publish an on signal to an MQTT broker. And then here I've got a Raspberry Pi that is also running Node Red. So I'm going to use Node Red to subscribe to the same topic as this programmable controller. And then I'll switch the LED on and off depending on the value that is being published to the topic. Okay, so now I'll head over to the browser on my PC and then access the Node Red editors of both devices. Okay, so that's my controller IP address. So I'll start Node Red from here. Okay, so the first thing that I'll want to do is to drag the inject node onto the canvas. Now I want to read the temperature after every three seconds. And then from here, I'll look for the node that would enable me to read the temperature from the temperature module. So I'll use this pack read, which is a node that has created specifically for this controller. And then since our node read is running on the controller, I'm going to use localhost. And then I'll be reading an analog input point. And then the tag name is the panel temperature. And then I'll put a label for this. Okay, and then I'll connect the two. Now, our temperature is actually in degrees Fahrenheit, so I want to include a block that would convert it to degrees Celsius. So for that, I'm going to use a function block. And then I'll double click into the text editor. And then here, I'll add the equation for converting from Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. And then I'll label this. And then I'll connect these two. Now, the next thing that I need is a node that will check to see if the temperature value is above a certain threshold. So for that, I'm going to use a function block again. And then I'll double click into the text editor. So here we're going to say if the payload is greater than say 25 degrees Celsius our message becomes a 1 or true else our message becomes a 0 And then we return that message. And then I'll call this check temperature. Okay, so before we publish this onto an MQTT broker, let's use a debug node to check what value we're getting. I'll click deploy and then I'll go into the debug window, clear the messages. So every three seconds we're getting a zero. Okay, so I'm going to heat up my temperature probe. Okay, now as you can see, we're starting to get a value of 1, meaning that our temperature is now above 25 degrees Celsius. 
Okay, so now we need to publish that value to an MQTT broker. So we're going to use an MQTT node. I'm going to drag it onto the canvas. And then I'm going to connect it to the check temperature node. And then go into its properties. So we're going to be using the Hive public broker. So this is the server address for the MQTT broker. And then this is the port number. And then we're going to specify the topic that we're publishing to. So we're going to call it node red course slash temperature state. And then we're going to label this. And then I'm going to deploy. Okay, so now I need to log into my Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to do that remotely. I'll enter the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Okay, and then I'm going to start Node Red. Okay, so Node Red is running on my Raspberry Pi. Now I'll go to my browser and type in the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Port eighteen eighty. Okay, so here on my Raspberry Pi, the first thing that I'm going to do is to subscribe to the topic that is being published to by the controller. Then I'll double click into the properties. Now I need to add the server details. Okay, and then the next thing that I need to do is to send the MQTT message to the pin where my LED is connected. So I'll use this node. So my LED is connected to GPIO pin number four. And then I want to initialize the pin to level low. And then I'll connect the two and then deploy my node red flow. So as you can see, currently we're getting a zero from our topic. So I'll hit up the temperature prop and then watch what the LED does. So if I increase the temperature of the prop to above 25 degrees Celsius, the LED must come on. There we go. 